गुड मॉर्निंग द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन इज रेडिएशन नो वट इज थर्मल रेडिएशन थर्मल रेडिएशन हीट ट्रांसफर इज ए डिस्टिंक्ट सेपरेट मैकेनिज्म फ्रॉम कंडक्शन एंड कन्वेक्शन फॉर ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट एनर्जी सो इट्स बेसिकली डिफरेंट मैकेनिज्म इन कंपेरिजन टू कंडक्शन एज वेल एज कन्वेक्शन इट रेफर्स टू हीट एनर्जी ट्रांसमिटेड बाय द बॉडी बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स टेम्परेचर रादर एमिटेड बाय द बॉडीज बिकॉज ऑफ देयर टेम्परेचर्स ऑल बॉडीज एट ए टेम्परेचर अब एब्सोल्यूट जीरो टेम्परेचर एमिट एनर्जी बाय ए प्रोसेस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ सच रेडिएशन डिपेंड्स अपॉन द टेम्परेचर एंड नेचर ऑफ द सरफेस the energy transfer by radiation does not require any medium between hot and cold surfaces the energy transfer by radiation is the fastest and it occurs at the speed of light and does not suffer any attenuation even in the vacuum in fact the heat transfer through an evacuated space can occur only by radiation so that means it does not require any medium when a person sits in front of a fire he gets most of heat energy by radiation further it is also interesting that the radiation heat transfer can also occur between two bodies separated by a medium that is colder than the both bodies for example the energy emitted by sun reaches the earth's surface after traveling through space and extremely cold air layers at high altitude even then we are able to get the energy from the sun to even though the temperature of in between layers is very very low now consider a solid that is initially at a high temperature ts so you can see here in this diagram this is a solid then that of its surroundings p and the temperature of surrounding is p s u r so this is the surroundings their temperature is p s u r and this is a solid and its temperature is p s and around which there exists a vacuum so inside between the surrounding and solid there is only vacuum the presence of the vacuum precludes energy loss from the surface of the solid by conduction or convection as you know that we require some material medium for the transfer of energy or heat energy due to conduction or convection however because there is only vacuum between the solid and the surrounding so it means there won't be any conduction or convection taking place however our intuition tells us that the solid will cool and eventually achieve thermal equilibrium with its surrounding this cooling is associated with a reduction in the internal energy stored by the solid and is a direct consequence of the emission of the thermal radiation from the surface in turn the surface will intercept and absorb radiation originating from the surrounding so basically the solid is also emitting certain amount of the energy the surroundings are also emitting certain amount of the energy so the energy which is leaving the solid will be reaching the surroundings and the energy which is coming from the surroundings will be a part of it would be coming on to the solid surface also since ps is greater than t surroundings which has been assumed in the present case the net heat transfer rate by radiation q radiation net is from the surface and hence the surface will cool until t t of the solid reaches to t surrounding so in equilibrium condition ps will be equal to t surrounding so you can see it here the diagram thermal radiations are being emitted by all the matter that surrounds you by the furniture and by the walls of the room if you are indoors or by the ground building and the atmosphere and sun if you are outdoors the mechanism of emission is related to energy released as a result of oscillations or transitions of the many electrons that constitute the matter so this energy is released or the radiation is 
taking place because of the result of the oscillations or transitions of many electrons that constitute the metal. These oscillations are in turn sustained by the internal energy and therefore the temperature of the metal. Hence, we associate the emission of thermal radiation with thermally excited conditions within the matter. The radiation originates due to emission by matter and that its subsequent transport does not require the presence of any matter. Now, what is the nature of this transport? How these radiations are transported? So, there are different theories of radiation. The first one is the Maxwell's theory. According to this theory, the energy is transferred from a hot body to the cold body in the form of electromagnetic waves. So, here we are talking about the wave nature of the material. These waves possess the energy emitted by a body as a result of change in its electronic configuration of atoms or molecules. These electromagnetic waves transport energy like other waves and all electromagnetic waves travels with the speed of light. The electromagnetic waves are characterized by their frequency nu and wavelength lambda in a particular medium. The two properties are related by lambda is equal to c by nu where c is the velocity of propagation in vacuum or c is the speed of light in medium. For propagation in vacuum, the value of c is given a value c naught which is equal to 2.998 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second. So, c is the speed of light, nu is the frequency of the electromagnetic waves and lambda is the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves. The second theory is the Max Planck's theory. According to this theory, the propagation of thermal radiation takes place in the form of discrete quanta known as photons and each quanta, each quanta having an energy of E equal to H nu and the value of nu we have just defined that H is equal to C by nu. So from here we can calculate the value of nu. Nu will be given by C by lambda where C as you know is the speed of light and H is the Planck's constant and its value is equal to 6.6. 256 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Nu is the frequency of the photons. C is the speed of light in the medium. The above equation shows that energy of photon is inversely proportional to lambda. So as the wavelength will increase, the energy emitted by the photon will reduce. Or in other ways, we can say shorter wavelength radiation possess the larger photon energy. This theory is used to predict the magnitude of emitted energy by a body at a given temperature under ideal conditions. Now this slide shows the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. So you can see here microwaves have a wavelength varying between 10 raised to power 2 to 10 raised to power 5 microns. Then we have the thermal radiation, it's, it is varying between 10 raised to power minus 1, which is uh, nothing but 0.1 micron and it varies up to 10 raised to power 2. So basically, if you see here, this is the lower limit of the wavelength and this is the higher limit of the wavelength and between 0.1 to 100 micron, it is a thermal radiation and a part of thermal radiation is infrared and solar radiation. Infrared radiation varies between 0.76 micron to 100 microns, whereas the solar radiation varies between 0.1 to 3 micrometers. And this range is the visible range. So it's a part of the solar radiation. And this varies between 0.4 to 0.76 micrometers or microns. Then we have ultraviolet radiations. It varies between 0.4 to 10 raised to the power minus 2 micrometer. Then we have the x rays varying between 10 raised to power minus 2 to 10 raised to power minus 4. So, once again, we have the same diagram and it shows the various colors also. Uh, here you can see now it's uh, in the reverse order. Here we have the lowest value and here we have the highest value of the lambda. In the previous diagram, if you will see, we have started here from the larger value and then 
in this direction the wavelength was reducing so it's now in the opposite direction so once again there is no such difference only thing is here that we have tried to show the visible radiation where it has different colors violet blue green yellow and red and the thermal radiation is shown between uh, 10 raised to power minus 1 to 10 raised to power 2 as i have told you earlier also and this is the range of the infrared radiations so thermal radiation once again is confined to infrared visible and ultraviolet regions of the spectrum and the lambda for it varies between 0.1 to 100 micrometer the amount of radiation emitted by an opaque surface now what is an opaque surface an opaque surface is one which only absorbs emits or reflects the radiation it will not transmit any radiation so an opaque surface will not transfer or transmit any radiation otherwise it will uh, absorb as well as emit and reflect the radiations so the amount of radiation emitted by an opaque surface varies with wavelength and we may speak of spectral distribution over all wavelengths or of monochromatic or spectral components associated with particular wavelengths so you can see here this is the wavelength lambda it is varying and this is how the monochromatic irradiation is varying so we will discuss about the monochromatic and irradiation terms later on uh, in uh, next few lectures so you will be getting to know about that later on the sun emits the radiation at an effective surface temperature of 5760 kelvin and bulk of this energy lies between lambda equal to 0.1 to 3 microns therefore this spectrum is referred to as the solar radiation the radiation energy emitted by the sun in the wavelength from 0.4 to 0.76 micron is visible to human eye therefore this spectrum is called visible light so for today's lecture i just wanted to discuss this much only